Welcome back to C Sharp for Beginners. In this tutorial, I will discuss variables, data types, and expressions. I hope you have reviewed my first two tutorials. You have installed C Sharp and you are able to compile and run the Hello World application that was demonstrated. Let's start with the programming concepts and we will start with the comment statement. A comment is the simplest type of C-sharp statement because C-sharp compiler ignores these statements. They can consist of anything you want. You can insert a comment to remind yourself why you did something or to clarify some tricky code you wrote. Often code that makes perfect sense today will mystify you tomorrow. So use comments to explain what you are thinking while you are writing the code. In C sharp, the code can be commented three different ways. You can comment it with the C++ style comment, which, which starts with the two slashes. The rest of the line is then the comment statement and ignored by the compiler. Or you can have multi-line comments, which is called the C style comment, starts with a slash and an asterisk and ends with the matching characters. Or the new documenting comment, in C sharp which starts with three slashes. The example here shows C sharp code with comments although they are not necessarily very useful comment. So in this case the statements that appear in green are all comments and they are ignored by the compiler. Primitive or value data types. You work every day with many kinds of data including text and numbers. Where you store information on your computer depends on what kind of information it is. If it is text, you probably store it in a Word document. If it is numerical values or mathematical formulas, you probably store it in a Microsoft Excel workbook or Microsoft Access database. And if it is graphics, you most likely store it in a PowerPoint presentation. By storing information in a file of an Office application, you are telling the recipient of that file what type of data it contains. C Sharp, like most other programming languages, uses a variable or constant to represent and temporarily store data that you use in your program. A variable, on the one hand, represents data that changes. Its value varies within a program. A constant, on the other hand, represents data that stays the same throughout your program. When you assign a value to a variable or a constant, it's, a, it's of a specific type. In C Sharp, you explicitly categorize your data or information type. For example, if you are working with text, the equivalent C Sharp data type category is a string or a char. If you are working with the whole numbers, you have several different types. Pick, int, in general. For floating point types, C sharp has float and double. Use the double in general. C sharp also has a boolean type for holding a true false type value. Why different data types? We need different data types to write efficient programs. For example, integer arithmetic is faster than a floating point type. Also, the memory required by one type may be less than the other variable or constant naming rules. The variable name must begin with a letter, underscore, dollar sign or a percent sign, cannot contain any periods or mathematical operators and must not be the name of C sharp keyword. We will look at the list of keywords in one of the later slides. Declaring variables data that you want to store in a program is often of a specific type. For example, the whole number 12 is an int type and the text hello there is a string data type. When you assign data to a variable, you will want to tell C Sharp what type of data you have. To formally indicate that, you need to use a declaration statement. Declaration statements for variables usually start with the type followed by the variable name 
and optionally its initial value. Here is an example. On the first line, I am declaring three variables x, y, z, they are all of the n type. On the second line, I am declaring one variable a which is of the int or the integer type and I am assigning an initial value to it 23. The next one is a double type called b and it has been given a value of 45.3. After that we have a variable called label, a string type which contains the label that I will be using for displaying my results. Here is a list of keywords in C sharp we already looked at some of them we came across some of them class int long string etc here is a list of arithmetic operators this is the addition subtraction multiplication division this is the modulus operator so there is no surprise here you know these are pretty straightforward uh, the next two the plus plus and minus minus these are called the increment and the decrement operators. They are basically derived from C++ and uh, make sure you understand them well before you try using them. This is how the assignment statements work and again you know these are pretty straightforward. On the first one I am taking the current value of C adding 1 to it and I am assigning the result to A. On the next line result of this multiplication is assigned to a variable a and here the result of a division is assigned to a variable called da. This is a complete example showing you how the assignments work. I am declaring a variable called gallons and another one called liters both of the double type. Next I am assigning a value of 10 to gallons. My program converts gallons to liters. So here my expression is gallons times 3.7854 which is then assigned to liters. When I run this program it will say gallon 10 equals so many liters. So this is an example of how the assignment statements work. The next one is the relational operators. When you want to compare two variables, for example is A greater than B or is A less than B? You are going to be using these operators. Here is the less than operator, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, exactly equal to and this is called not equal to. Look at this example. Here I have two variables x and y, x is 10, y is 5. The question I am asking here is x is x greater than y and if I run this program this statement would print true. Is x less than y? That is false. Is x not equals y? That is true. So think about these statements, run the program and see if you can predict what the output of the complete program would be. And again please note that you can download these complete examples from my website. The next one is the list of logical operators. I am going to be focusing on two of them, the AND and the OR operators. Look at this example. We got x, y, a, b, etc. And the question that I want to ask is, is, is x greater than y and at the same time a greater than b? That would be the statement. x greater than y and a greater than b. That's a false statement. What if I ask the question, is x greater than y or a greater than b? Then that statement is a true statement. Okay, so we learn about variables, data types and assignments. Next, I will discuss, in the next tutorial, I will discuss the if statement and the select statement which are used for making decisions. Thank you.